If you're here for the puppy mill, we ask that you don't sign in. There will be a chance to speak when it's on the consent agenda and they open it up to the public. I'm sorry, that's what it's on the consent agenda. Here, they can speak so, at the public meeting anyhow. So, anything that's on the consent agenda, anything that's on the consent agenda, or anything at all that's on the agenda for the night, you can't sign in for because they open it up to the public and then they call on it. Makes it a little easier, all right? So, it's on, it's on here, it's on the consent and the call. So you can have one of these in this file, all right? So if you're on here for that. Well, let's put this way. If it's going to be on the same item, what you have is going to be on the same item. If it's going to be on the same item, if a couple of you want to get together and talk together, so it saves a little bit of time, you can do that. I'm not saying that you have to, I'm just suggesting. If five of you have the same thing that you want to say, get like a spokesperson, but you can all come up to the mic and you can speak. But it will save time and it will give the next group a chance. Okay. All right, I'm just suggesting it. The item, as I said, if you didn't hear me, it's on the consent agenda. So don't sign in if you want to talk about the puppy mill or the, kid, the puppy and kitten mill. It's on the consent, the council will open it to the public, and that's when you can come up and speak. Excuse me? Um, no. No. Okay. Um, no, they'll just call them up. We don't want them. We don't want a list. Um, you're not going to be able to film in here at a council meeting. Yeah, I can. What are you talking about? That's all the public no. meeting that. See the signs? See the signs? Tell me. Our cameras are wrong with you. Are you roll off your medication? Are you taking pictures? Yes, I can. It's it's where you sign in. What are you talking about? Have a seat. No, I'm taking pictures of this. Uh, 
This guy's a psychopath. This guy's grabbing sheets. Look at him. I want you to address that. I have it all recorded. Have a seat. I have it all recorded. Well, I'll tell you what, sir. You can have a seat. You interrupt the speed. I'll have it removed. And then everybody oh, Does he have to have a seat? Does he have to have a seat? Yes. Okay. Hi. Really? This is, you're proving our case. Thank you. You're a psychopath, dude. You're breaking the law. This is a public meeting. You Look at the law. Are you, Are you stupid? Look at the law. separate list for the consent agenda that you would like for us no. to sign? Okay. No, because it's open to the public, so they That's have to come up so, at that time. So if you want to speak about the pet shop, is that now it's time to do that? No. Mm -hmm. no. It's a little Okay. Um, back. The um, council is going to um, allow three minutes per person in light of the number of people that are here tonight that would like to speak. That will come uh, at the time the consent agenda. Um, that will probably be removed from the consent agenda and then open to the public. So if you're here to speak on that, that will be the time that you will get to do that. And um, council's been a lot, three minutes per person, in light of the number of folks that are here that would like to be heard, so that we can accommodate everybody having an opportunity to speak. You should also be aware that per the ordinance, Township 1030, is uh, no new business after 10.30, so we're trying to expedite things to get us to that point so that you get the opportunity to speak um, 11 o'clock uh, by ordinance the meeting ends. Um, so I just want to, in advance, let you know that, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Madam. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for the attorney. Wait, one second. These folks are here in reference to the ordinance that they want. One second. She was talking to the Sorry. clerk was talking to the attorney, so we couldn't hear you. Okay, go ahead. Right, for the attorney. Yeah. The, uh, these people want to expound more on an ordinance in reference to uh, the puppy mills as opposed to this resolution. This resolution, which has absolutely no bearing or anything else on law, it's just us making a statement. That is not what they're looking for. They're looking to talk about these things. And I don't think either one of them has anything to do with the other. And therefore, they should be speaking in this portion. Well, you said, uh, 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 if we're going to conduct the meeting, it's going to be professional and courteous to all speakers. We're not going to have people creating a problem here tonight. Everybody's going to get their opportunity to speak. You treat everybody the way you would like to be treated, and the meeting will go smoothly. You have different opinions as other people, and that's fine, and that's why we're here to let you do that. But please understand that if things get out of control, uh, we're going to bring the meeting to a halt, and that accomplishes nothing for everybody who's shown up tonight. So you may agree or disagree with what somebody says, um, there's no need to get into clapping and carrying on while somebody's speaking. Um, it's just going to slow the meeting down. So I'm just telling you that now so that this goes smoothly and everybody who's here gets the opportunity to speak. Just keep that in mind throughout the meeting and everything should go smoothly, okay? Thank you. Um, Councilman, yes. um, so and the only way that we're going to be able to delineate it then is people are going to have to be specific as to what they would like to speak about. Um, that exact, I, I agree with you all 100%. So if, if they want to talk about the resolution, which means absolutely nothing, they should wait until the consent agenda. If they want to talk about passing an ordinance in reference to not allowing any sales of cats or dogs from puppy mills, it's now is when they should be speaking. If they're, if, yes, if, if in fact they want to speak about an ordinance, that is completely different legal issue than the resolution itself. Right. So there's, how many people have signed up? Four? On the other list. Uh, four. All right, so um, call them from the, call them from, hold on folks, relax. You'll get an opportunity to speak. We have, uh, we have an opportunity now to speak, and we also have at the end of the um, program or agenda another opportunity. So, um, so with, that, with that being said, uh, Madam Clerk, you want to call the first, and let's do the board that have signed up, and then we'll proceed from there. Uh, Joe Gallo. Good evening, I'm Joe Gallo, I'm from New Jersey. Um, I'd like to discuss, obviously, the pet shop that's opening. During the last council meeting, you heard from several people from other cities, other counties, and yes, other states. There was one actual resident that spoke. All these people have well, good intentions, and they want to stop puppy mills, so, so do we. And we also want to keep the shelters empty. Today, I'll tell you that they have a petition with over 2,500 signatures. These signatures are mostly from activist groups all over the country, along with a few residents. Anyone reading this petition would sign it immediately. And they probably cry when they read it because it's so sad. Unfortunately, this petition is worthless. It's full of lies, propaganda, and stock puppy mill photos. Actually, nothing stated in the petition is true. These people are free to write and say anything they want with no facts and no fear of consequences. The, the, the petition has been plastered all over social media, across the United States, and on every New Jersey site. Okay, Middlesex, Monmouth County sites, Old Bridge, Malpin, every single site. With all that plastering, they have only 2,500 signatures. And again, the petition is completely bogus. Then they will tell you that the USDA licenses do nothing. The USDA is a national government organization that monitors the food we eat. Being USDA licensed is just a minimum requirement we have. We don't buy from every USDA breeder just the best ones. Also, we do not buy from any of the breeders that have any violations. They will tell you that over 100 townships in New Jersey ban puppy sales. What they won't tell you is that almost all of these townships had no opposition, and they only heard the lies. 
the bans were passed in the dark of the night. They will ask you to put bans and laws in place to protect against puppy mills. Well, these laws already are in place. In fact, New Jersey is one of the most regulated states when it comes to selling puppies. Breeders must be USDA licensed. You cannot purchase with any violation in the last two years. Stores must have on the kennel for every puppy available to the public the USDA inspection reports for the breeder for the last two years. Have on the kennel for every puppy available to the public the USDA inspection reports for the broker for the last two years. The USDA inspection reports must be posted. Every puppy must have a card posted on the kennel showing the full name and everything about the breeder, name, address, and email address. The breeder's USDA license number, the breeder's state license number. Name and address and email of the broker, name and address of the transportation company, name and address of the consulting veterinarian, and the date of the vet exam. The state's Department of Agriculture and the USDA Animal Welfare Division enforce these laws. The non-licensed and unregulated breeders sell directly to consumers over the internet, rest stops, and parking lots, and encourage evading federal regulatory oversight. Pet sale bans have not shut down puppy mills, improved animal welfare, eliminated puppy sales over the internet, or reduced shelter population. In fact, the Humane Society itself reported in 2007 that there were 10,000 puppy mills in the U.S. They worked hard and passed 340 pet sale bans since then. Today, 2020, the Humane Society is reporting that there are 10,000 puppy mills in the U.S., proving that they did nothing to affect puppy mills. There is still no evidence that any ban has resulted in the closure of one single puppy mill. Tonight, you'll hear from misinformed residents that have been recruited to speak. The activists have been reaching out. The activists have been reaching out, literally begging people on the internet to come into this meeting tonight, and are being told exactly what to say. They are scripted. There are hundreds and hundreds of Old Bridge and local residents that have been reaching out to us in support. Most of the people in this room tonight are support of the story. We can't allow a few people, almost all, not even from here, to threaten us as a community and tell us what we have to do. If we give into this charade, what's next? banning meat from supermarkets to support their vegan agenda, closing down any business that, that, that doesn't meet their ideals. These people are bullying anyone who supports that shop. On Facebook, on any type of social media, they're making threats, they're vulgar, they're putting cameras in your face outside, filming everyone, copying phone numbers down. These are terrorist tactics, okay? These people are not following the rules. There's signs posted all over here saying no cameras. Yeah, there's cameras. I, I had a camera in my face since I was in the hallway. Okay, this is not how we conduct business. We're going to run a good business. We're going to follow the laws and the regulations that are in place. We offer to show every single person, the readers, where they come from. They could visit them. They could go online and see them. These are not puppy mills. We want to stop puppy mills. By not allowing the sale of good, good dogs that were bred by good breeders, you are encouraging puppy mills. People are going all over this country to buy dogs. They're meeting in rest stops on the side of the road getting dogs that they have no history on and sick and ill. And they're being forced to do this. Ask yourself, your friends and relatives, where did they get their dogs? Wouldn't they like a place locally where they can get a dog that's bred properly? So all these arguments you hear tonight about puppy mills, we agree 100%. We're in the fight against puppy mills. We want the shelters empty. We have plans in place to help adopt cat and kittens. The Old Bridge shelter is overrun with kittens. They have two dogs. Overrun with cats and kittens. We have a program that will support the shelters. Food, even places in the store where they can do adoptions. So I beg you to just try to see beyond the lies. Because, like I said, people can say whatever they want, whenever they want, with no, there's no cost for them to do that. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Tom Gallup, owner of the pet shop. So clearly there's a lot of false information out there. After the last council meeting, we reached out to the only person that was an Old Bridge resident and who raised concerns how we would affect the Old Bridge shelter specifically. I asked to meet with her and hear her perspective and hear her concerns about the store. She refused to meet. We answered all her questions, letting her know that we would share our breeders, what's included with our puppies, etc. We also let her know we'll not be selling cats or kittens, since that rumor seems to be going around. 
After refusing to meet with us, she started posting on Facebook and started a petition spreading false information and lies, even though she had all the correct information from us. We reached out several more times to meet with her before finally getting a response. I will meet with you when you agree to not sell puppies, otherwise we have nothing to discuss. Other people harassing you to pass this ban have no interest in a two-way discussion about it either. Rather than meet in person and talk about it like adults, they would rather sit behind their keyboards, spread false information and lies, curse at us, and yes, even threaten us, threatening my family. Last meeting, Sherry expressed her concerns about us affecting the shelter. You'll hear from people tonight claiming pet shops have a negative impact on local shelters. This is not true. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Less than 5.5% of shelter pets are purebred. There is a 5.3 million gap in demand for dogs in the United States between the number of dogs available in the shelters and the annual demand for dogs in the U.S. In our store, we have programs to not only help support the local shelters, but to ensure that no dog purchased from our store ends up in a shelter. Our Pets for a Lifetime policy is to ensure that none of the pets sold in our store end up homeless or in an animal shelter. We will take back or find a home for any pet sold in our store. We, always have, and we also have a program that helps support providing food for the animal shelter. I know they have a long list of cat food online, but they really need help. As you can see, we're not a threat to the animal shelters. Instead, we'll be an asset. I stopped by the Oak Ridge Animal Shelter the other day and spoke with the very friendly staff there. I was surprised to see only two dogs there. One adult pit bull mix, and the other currently not adoptable to, due to a skin condition. When I asked how often they got dogs in, the response was rarely. They mostly get cats. There were several cats up for adoption. I would love the opportunity to work with the Oak Ridge Shelter help find these cats new forever homes. We have space in our store dedicated that we can put these cats in our store. The store would get a lot more traffic than the Old Bridge Shelter does. We offer incentives to people who adopt the cats as well. Um, free food, um, litter boxes, all incentives to try to help find these cats homes. For the people who claim we source our puppies from puppy mills, I ask this. Have you ever visited a USDA licensed breeder? let alone the specific ones we'll be getting our puppies from? The answer is no, you haven't. And yet, they will stand up here today and tell you we buy from puppy mills. They'll show you stock photos from online and, and just Google pics of puppy mills. They're horrific. Puppy mills are terrible. These breeders are nothing like that. We have pictures and video on our website of us personally visiting the, breeder, the breeders that we buy from. I've gone as far as flying my drone around the whole property to assure people there's no secret back buildings that people are claiming there are, and that the front is, is a ruse. Completely untrue. I made sure the breeders we are getting our puppies from are the best of the best. I hope these people making their false accusations get a chance to visit these breeders and see for themselves how wrong they really are. We plan on having several more breeder trips and we welcome all of the council and the mayor to come with us on these breeder trips and see the breeders for yourself. Thank you. Says this is what a puppy mill is. I don't, nor have I ever met one individual. 
that says, oh, yeah, I, I can do that. Nobody does. Um, but the only way to combat that is with the truth. And so our purpose of our company is to go out, uh, offer an inspection, and try to make it as transparent as possible for an old bridge uh, consumer or, or customer to come in and uh, come to the store and see directly where that pet comes from. So with his idea of drone, we purchased a drone. By the end of the summer, every, every pet that uh, goes into the store with a QR code, your customers, their customers will be able to see exactly where that came from, the kennel that came from. Be able to see the parents, the sires, the dams, the weights. Um, be able to see the veterinary directors. I have two veterinarians on staff, uh, Dr. Bill Oxford, Dr. Scott Burton, and I also employ 42 other uh, employees, all responsible for caring for the dogs, inspecting the kennels, and ensuring that they leave our place and get to the new store with as little stress as possible. Um, and that's the whole goal, so they can find their family as quickly as possible. We ensure, with all the staff, with the doctors, we ensure and are able to provide to every customer that purchases a pet that comes through us a health guarantee against any genetics, any genetic or inheritable issues. Uh, we also provide a five generation pedigree. We track all that information to ensure that if there's a genetic issue that pops up, that, that we don't continue to have that issue from a same breed pair. We offer in May, March 7th actually is our 12th educational conference. Uh, this year it's attended, will be attended by 400 breeders. Uh, we have the CEO of the Orthopedic Foundation Brands, a geneticist from Mars Wisdom Panel, um, numerous other speakers, a virologist with Mark Amabel, that all come and spend all day talking to our breeders and other breeders that don't necessarily visit with us on how to provide a better path. So that's March 7th, and I'll extend the offer that Tom's up there at any point in time. Um, you don't even have to announce it. Stores do it quite a bit. Come by the shop. We more than happy to show you exactly where the bus is coming from. Thank you. officer back in the 50s. My grandmother was one of the first people that lived in housing development in the older estates of uh, English Town Road. My parents moved to Spotswood. I resided there, moved away, and moved back. With that being said, in the state of New Jersey over the last five or six years, we've had enormous amounts of animal shelters issues as well as pet store issues. Some of those pet store issues I was personally involved in. Many of the of just pups had four stores closed in Jersey and one store closed in New York within a matter of a year. Breeders Pub and Brick was also closed. Fancy Pups and Woodbridge was closed. Uh, Pet, uh, Lucky Pets up in Edgewater Cliffs was also closed. All of these were closed because of disease, genetic defects, parvo, distemper, giardia, coccidia, roundworm, tapeworm, and all of these dogs came from licensed USDA breeders, every one of them. The issue here is they can sugarcoat this any way they want. Just because you have a USDA breeder's license does not mean that you are a reputable breeder. And it does not mean that your puppies look like they do in the store. Naturally, you're not going to sell something that's mad with its eyeballs bulging out of its head with open wounds and tumors and sores and pussy ears. Nobody's going to buy that. However, that cute little Maltese puppy whose mother is stuck inside of a cage in some puppy mill in Missouri, because that's one of the largest areas in the country where there are Missouri is puppy mills, one of the places where Daniel Lasaka got his. You're not going to tell me that Old Bridge thinks that this is a good idea. Maybe you only had one person that came here, but then again, when you're <coughs> being bullied online by the breeders, which they come on my page quite often, I've had USDA breeders come on my page from Missouri and threaten me with my life. They can knock themselves out. My address is public record, they can show up at my house. If Mr. Gallo is so concerned about being videotaped here at the meeting, maybe Mr. Gallo should look up the Oval Public Meetings Act because he commented about cameras being in his face. I'm going to leave these with you tonight. These are all of the incidents over the last couple of years with respect to puppy mills in this state. 
Currently, there's a puppy mill down in Millville that has 156 dogs on its property. And yes, to those people that I spoke, I have seen puppy mills up close and personal. I've been on them. I have two puppy mill dogs at home. I've seen them. I've photographed them. I've photographed the dogs. I have photographed what the dogs look like when they were pulled out of puppy mills. And yes, we do have puppy mills in New Jersey as well. They're few and far between. But again, just because you have a USDA license does not mean that you are doing everything by the book. Some of the people in this room have sourced from the, the Harpo 100, which is the worst 100 puppy mills. We actually have people in this room tonight that have sourced from those puppy mills. So if Old Bridge is looking forward to having a lot of picketers come to their, to, to their meetings and to outside this puppy store that's going in at the shops of Old Bridge, and there's an awful lot of people. People may not be here. People have families. People have jobs. People may not be here. But I can guarantee you, just like the Sequest up in Woodbridge, you're going to have people every weekend when we're at this pet store. And I find it really hard to believe, especially in light of some of the individuals that are up here and some of the individuals I've been in front of before, to say that it's perfectly okay. I just find it really disturbing that in a town such as this, that we're going to allow a pet store which comes from Petland, whether they call themselves something else or not, and Petland has had numerous violations. They've had abuse, <clears throat> excuse me. They've had diseases that have transferred to humans. So for instance, if you have a puppy with Parvo that winds up in their store and somebody goes in and touches it, they've now walked around the shops at Old Bridge, touched everything else. If your dog doesn't have a Parvo shot, or your dog doesn't, isn't up to date on this Parvo shot, or you went and got a puppy from the Old Bridge shelter, it's a good likelihood that your dog's going to end up with Parvo. Parvo survives for six months after you touch it. You're going to be walking that all over the place. <coughs> I'm going to leave these with you. I certainly hope that everybody up there would at least look at these and see what's going on with these. These are all recent cases within the last five years. Thank you. credentials, we don't know what we're talking about, we haven't done hands-on. So kind of as a background, I'm the president of Dog Advocacy and Rescue, I put my money where my mouth is, and what we do is we fund the court cases that come to municipalities like you folks to help defend the rights of dogs that have been abused by humans. Unfortunately, it happens too often. Uh, until they went, front, they went uh, internal, I was a volunteer with PetSmart Charities, their rescue wagon, and managed to fly all over the country on a moment's notice doing raids on uh, commercial breeders, we call them puppy mills, but commercial breeders, and hoarders, and bad shelters, and things like that, and it was absolutely sickening. Uh, what I got to see firsthand were puppies, uh, were dogs who were used as breeding dogs, with the size, the, the size of a beagle living in a cage with a wire mesh background uh, down uh, under speed, the size of a dishwasher. Uh, that is the norm. When Gene mentioned about this guy, Abe Miller, I've, I've seen his sights, almost got shot when I tried to visit it because other <laughs> people would come and see him because God would make you the right thing, the wrong thing. I'm also a member of the Camden Animal Response Team, the County Animal Response Team in Camden County, with guys who showed up when Superstorm Super Storm Sandy hit the Jersey Shore and put our lives at risk. And we saw the things that were going on and trying to help people save their animals. I also was involved with uh, someone brought up Michael Vick, the Michael Vick Rescue uh, Best Friends Animal Society, where 46 dogs were pulled from a good fighter who still thinks he's right and tries to convince people that it's, it's his background. A um, couple of things I want to point out to you while I have the time. CEO of Petland two years ago stated he couldn't believe anybody would buy a dog or would set up a pet store selling puppies in New Jersey. I feel sorry for Mr. Gallo because the franchise salesman must have done a really good job. 
The other thing is, we've sent you tons of information. I appreciate those of you who actually have read it. I got the weed receipts. And the last thing I want to share with you, rather than take a lot of time, is, and I apologize for the quality of the picture. Uh, these are taken pictures. They're not made up pictures. One is going to be this one, which I'll share with you, which is how the eight puppies who I'm fostering live in my home in an eight by 10 room. And what you see in the puppy store, one more second, the play area with an 8 by 80 foot run that they're in, what they're going to live like in, in pet land, and I will give this to you. There's a pet land sign that I think you'll find interesting because it talks about the disease. Anyone else in this room? Yeah. Let's By the way, you're all invited to multiple breeders. Love good New Jersey quality breeders who would love to show you how it's done the right way. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I should have sat in the back, I guess. <laughs> My name is Jeff Nash. I have been the, have the honor of serving as a Camden County freeholder for the past 30 years. And I was first elected when I was 12, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm here today because Old Ridge is, a, is about to permit the retail sale of dogs and cats for the first time in this state in over five years. And the last time a retail sales store opened in New Jersey was in my community. And I sat where you're sitting today, six years ago, not knowing what I was about to experience. And we at Camden County and the 37 municipalities that passed the ban on the retail sale of animals we heard testimony, not only from the advocates, but from responsible breeders, from the shelters, who gave us their perception as to what is right and what is wrong. And what we found through that testimony is that the retail sale of animals in the store is not only archaic, it is fundamentally wrong. And there are three public policy reasons which um, prompted 37, every single township in Camden County including the Plusta County, to not under the dark of night, but through public testimony, pass the ban. Policy number one, as you've heard, the sale of puppy mill dogs is just horrific. The conditions in which these dogs are bred throughout the country is just unacceptable. That's number one, and that's obvious. Number two, the county and the municipalities are trying to promote the, the rescue and the adoption in their forever homes of rescue dogs. There were thousands of rescue animals. There were four rescue shelters in Camden County alone. And those shelters advocated to us, please help us prompt the families who are looking to buy a dog or to bring a dog into their house to first look at our shelters. But also, we heard from the responsible breeders. And what I learned and did not know is that there were hundreds if not thousands of responsible breeders in the state of New Jersey and in my community. And what each of those responsible breeders told us many times is that a responsible breeder would not broker one of their animals. They would go and they would want to meet the families that were taking in the animal. They wanted to want to make sure that the purchaser of their dog, a pure <coughs> dog, was going to give that dog a loving home and care. The third and maybe most complicated issue that we were grappling with is a consumer products issue. Because we heard testimony from... Thank you very much. Before I start, uh, this letter was sent to you. I just wanted to present you with a copy of it. It is from Chief Russell Citra, the Executive Director of the Monmouth County SPCA. Sir, can you just give your name for the record? Yes. Please. Yes, I am Matty Giuliano. I am the chaplain of the Monmouth County SPCA uh, in Eatontown. It is a distinct honor and privilege to be here once again to speak in support of an ordinance prohibiting the retail sale of cats and dogs in pet stores. I feel it's important to let each and every one of you know who I am and why I believe this, in, this ordinance is vital to the health and welfare of animals, not just in Old Bridge, but throughout the entire state. For 10 years, I served as an animal cruelty officer in New Jersey, completing approximately 2,000 animal cruelty investigations. In that time, I have seen the pain and anguish 
pet owners have experienced when they made the emotional impulse decision to purchase a cat or a dog from a less than desirable breeder. Well, I am not going to take up your evening with all of the specific details of these cases involving the sale of puppy mill dogs. I would like to address this body from my current position as the chaplain for the Monmouth County SPCA and PBA Local 394. St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of animals, once said, always preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. So that's what I intend to do here this evening. As a chaplain for all of God's creatures, great and small, I can say with the greatest of certainty that the creation of our companion animals needs to not only be a gift of love, but a creation that is celebrated, respected, and revered. While there are many who believe that we have dominion over all of creation, that dominion does not mean domination, and that we must be good, responsible stewards on their behalf. The reason why passage of an ordinance prohibiting the retail sale of cats and dogs is essential is self-evident. As countless investigations and reports reveal, the awful, inhumane conditions under which these poor, innocent animals are kept before they are put on display for the unsuspecting consumer, not to mention the horrific conditions that the dogs and cats left behind are forced to endure. St. Francis made it very clear when he said, not to hurt our humble brethren is our first duty to them, but to stop there is not enough. We have a higher mission, and that is to be of service to them whenever they require it. I don't know if anyone here has ever had a personal relationship with a companion animal. I know for myself personally, I have been truly blessed by my animal companions, and our shared love and devotion has awakened a dormant part of my soul and has thus led me down this path to be a voice for all of God's creatures. I believe all of you here today, deep within your spirit, know that a municipal ordinance is long overdue. Redefining how cats and dogs are bought and sold reflects the kindness and compassion these animals deserve as a vital part of God's creation. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Camille Napolitano. I do not have their credentials, nor do I have their statistics. I support all of you. No, but I am, I'm sorry? I didn't hear it. Drop your name and hold My name is Camille Napolitano. I am a resident of Old Bridge. However, I am, I do have a personal experience I would like to share. I used to have two dogs. I now have three. I came upon the third dog because I walked into a Petland store and I saw them bringing this little dog down to the basement. And I asked the owner, or whoever the employee was, what, what's going on with that dog? It looked like some kind of chalky mix or whatever. And they said, well, we can't sell this dog because this dog has a doom cloth. But we can give it to you for a reasonable price, but we are unable to sell it. Now, sell it. Now, I ask you, I mean, just a stupid little thing like that, that I had this dog for eight years, and I'm speaking for all the animals, I'm not a crazy dog person or bird lady or anything like that. But I have a personal experience that if you had like a hangnail or something, would you want to be judged because of that? So I'm not going to take up the whole three minutes, but I'd really like you to consider what everyone's asking you here to not do in our township because uh, I'd also like to use this forum um, that I initiated two years ago, a Facebook page. I know many of you are not familiar pleasant, please with Facebook, but I use it as a forum for lost, found, adopt, foster animals of Oldbridge and surrounding areas, and I implore all of you to join it, so that if you see that dog walking the street because it was abandoned, that you go there and maybe we could bring home under the right conditions. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Steve Emberg from Middlesex Borough. Despite what you've heard tonight, there are no ethical breeders who supply puppy stores. The laws and regulations, as you've heard, are hopelessly outdated, and the inspections are even worse. Every bred dog sold equals a dead dog in a shelter due to lack of space. Even though Oldbridge right now may have a little bit of space, in general, most shelters are overflowing. 
Dogs and cats are not commodities. When they are given up or turned away by the people who buy them from pet stores, they become burdens to the rescue groups and shelters, and we're already out of space. My organization has prop I don't know how many dogs came from Petland, but we I'm sure we've done several hundred that we've taken in because of various reasons. And that, that's not the way they should be treated. You've heard a lot of empty promises and falsehoods tonight from the people who think that dogs should be commodities. They only care about their profit. And I can tell you over 20 years of experience that I've had tells me what the truths really are. Unfortunately, you've heard a lot of them. And the last point I'd like to make is that in these 20 plus years I've been doing this work, I see that there's a sexist component to it. Men make the profits and women do a lot of the rescue work and they become the caregivers. It's an important uh, issue to consider because women are bearing an unnecessary burden of caring for animals because of so many uh, men who want to make profit off of the animals. I go in an hour for this meeting with Janani. Uh, I live with my children. Where are you from? I come from Brick. That's by the Jersey Shore. But I think this is a very important call. That's why I came here. And my story is very different from everybody else. I come from South America. And over there, I rescued many dogs, many spray dogs from the street. But coming from the coming to the United States, I had no idea what a puppy mill was. So I went, I walked into a, a pet store for the first time, and I fell in love with a puppy. But that puppy came home very sick. I had no idea. And I paid a lot of money for that puppy. And he came with a kidney failure. He didn't last very long. And I would like to make everybody aware where those dogs come from. They look very healthy, but nobody knows their pets. So the public needs to make, to be aware where they come from. They are sick because people don't, puppies don't take good care of them. They don't worry about those puppies. Good breeders do, shelters do. Now I have another dog that I adopted from a shelter. That's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I remember Jerry, like I said, that he came all the way from society down the block over there. You guys actually came to my house and told me you guys, as a homeowner, young homeowner, I should get involved. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> so, I'm here because I heard about this puppy, this pet store being open through the Oldbridge residence page. I wasn't even aware that someone went to high school with Tom Gallo over here, who was the man behind it. We just saw all these extremely negative posts about this puppy mill being open. And I was very, when I said I'm open the store, I was shocked to hear it was the same one. So I asked him all the points that these people brought up on the Facebook page. And he gave me list for list contacts and everything they're telling you. It's very hard to do this right now. These professionals, they're to their own, what they said themselves. They go from town to town doing this. They've done this a hundred times. They know exactly how to do this. I'm not, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a plumber. This is new to me. So you got to, oh, okay, two minutes. So, all I can tell you is that, that, that I looked up a post while sitting back there, they put on. I page about 7,000, almost 8,000 people, 700, 7,000 something. Six people like that post, six people. That's not what, this room isn't representing what's going on out there. And if you have the context of the internet of these claims, the, he talks about how that, the, that when you open up a pet store, the negative, it, doesn't, it doesn't stop the sale of pets through pet stores. And this woman comes to dispute that, but then she conflates it by saying, well look, the adoption number rises, so he was wrong. He never talked about adoption numbers. He talked about pet store sales. 
That's what he was talking about. But they conflated the two and made you seem like they made a wrong statement. That was not the case at all. Secondly, we want to buy a dog. We were going to do it. We want an African way to do it. She wants a Yorkie. And trust me, there's no way I'm going to change your mind about a shelter dog. She wants a Yorkie. So whether he opens it or not, we've been waiting for it. But we're going to get it one way or the other. And we just want a safe and ethical way to do this. Give us that opportunity. That's like shutting down the Whole Foods, but letting the shop rights and the AMCs go by. Give us a place that's going to educate consumers of how to do it the right way and not. See, they could scoff this, scoff them behind me. You, they had a whole row of people an hour to talk against them, against them. It's not the right way to defend your position. These are real stories, real context. I urge you all, you're not going to talk tonight, but everything they give you to look up to a few dead points, please read it. Please take the time, like I did here in my fiance. I have to go out of work tonight. I work nights. I took the time now for this. Please do the same. And for the woman who claimed that that was the Mennonites and Amish women that, that run these puppy mills, that must have been some horse and buggy ride you took to get here from Missouri. I gotta tell you. Oh my god. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, have a good night, everybody. Um, we did send some emails because we know you were getting bombarded by these people that just don't stop. I'm sure you saw um, some of the beautiful things that I sent, the video I sent, and other things that we do and how we go out and see our breeders. Um, I've been in business nine years. It's a second business for me. I was in technology for 23 years, and when selling that business, I got into this business uh, for just the sheer love of it. Um, it's thriving. We grow month after month, year after year. I have people coming in for their beautiful, healthy puppies. They come in for their first puppy. They come in for second puppies. They come in for third puppies and fourth puppies. We have excellent veterinary oversight. I happen to be a financial backer in my brother's veterinary practice. Aside from my brother being a veterinarian, I have a wonderful veterinary clinic right down the road from us that does a fabulous job and in fact I sent over the letter from our serving veterinarians. Uh, we've been harassed for years by these people. For instance, they go out on social media. My, my brother's a 30 plus year exemplary veterinarian in the state of New Jersey. He's been practicing. They find out that my brother is my brother and what do they do? They post on Facebook that he's falsifying veterinary health certificates. This is what they do. They just make this stuff up. My brother doesn't even do the veterinary health certificates in my store. So they harass, they harass, they downplay, come into my store, see how beautiful it is. We have people come in every day. I try to rescue. They don't have the puppies I'm looking for. They make it so difficult. We get people come in every day that are being scammed on the internet. They come in, they're losing money. They say, I'm so glad we found you because now I can meet the dog. I can talk to you. I have full consumer protection. Has, have any of you done your homework and know what the state laws are right now and what the regulations are in place? I sell a sick dog. I'm liable for up to two times the cost of that dog. If a veterinarian finds an unfit situation with one of my puppies, I'm on the hook. You have hundreds of rescues running around unregulated in this state. There's Home for Good Rescue right now that is up on charges for falsifying health records. Thank you. Thank and you and they go on. Hi, Jill DeCaro, I'm an Elbridge resident, and uh, I'm not a professional. I was not forced to come here tonight, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I decided to speak tonight because to remain silent would be a disservice, and I'm reading really fast because I only have three minutes. I thought I was going to have five. 
Um, I decided to speak tonight because to remain silent would be a disservice to the thousands of dogs kept in less than adequate care and bred over and over again in USDA licensed commercial breeding facilities. These facilities are only required to meet the minimum requirement for basic life of dogs. I will not stand quiet as long as there are voiceless animals in need of my voice. Ever since I can remember, pet stores have concerned me, even when I was too young to understand why. Growing older, I learned where these puppies come from. The problem is not with the pet store themselves, because oftentimes they are staffed by animal-loving employees with true concern for their well-being. Be that as it may, they all know the truth about where these puppies are coming from. I'm sure they feel as if they are doing their part to at least help these puppies have a good life, but I cannot speak for those people. Who I can speak for are the mamas and the papas in the commercial breeding facilities who are bred over and over again until they are of no use. Then I ask you, what do you think happens to those dogs? In trying to have an intelligent civil conversation on this topic the other day, I was told that it's too late to do an ordinance and that even if we do it, it won't affect this story. The following are townships that passed and upheld an ordinance where existing puppy selling pet stores exist without any lawsuits. Washington Township, Edgewater, Fairlawn, Brick Township, Cherry Hill, and Kearney. I've been told instead of going after this business, I should go after the puppy mills themselves and that somehow my concern is invalidated if I don't have first-hand knowledge of the horrors that these animals experience. Apparently, I was told there are so many issues and problems going on that I should just leave this business alone because this is America and anyone can open a business if they want. While this is true, this is America, and as an American, I will speak up and speak out for what I believe, and I will never remain silent because I have a voice, and these animals do not. I also had separate conversations I want to add with other council members, Ms. Mrs. Brown and Mr. Merman, and I want to thank you for listening with open ears and open minds and, and trying to offer your positive feedback. Lastly, I'm looking at my time. All right, I only have 35 seconds. But I'd like you to reference Joaquin Phoenix's speech last night. He made a very poignant and relative uh, speech to what he said last night regarding uh, equality. Now, let, I just want to end with, let us think about where we want to be in this discussion and where we want our legacy to be. Please pass this ordinance because there is no right, right way to do the wrong thing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm also with Prairie Licious. I live in Bridgewater, New Jersey. Um, I don't really know where to start, but one of the things that I think is incredibly disingenuous by the activists who are here tonight is that they worked to get legislation passed in 2015, which is the current Pet Purchase Protection Act, that required us that we only buy from USDA breeders. We, at the time, we were fairly new and were very small boutique at the time, we happened to be working with a number of small local breeders. And to say that no responsible breeder would sell to a pet store is simply nonsense. We have many, many good breeders, both commercial USDA breeders and at the time, small local hobby breeders. So we are no longer able to buy from a local small hobby breeder. They said that you can only buy from USDA <coughs> licensed breeders because those are the only ones that are regulated and hobby breeders there is no regulation for. Now those are the breeders that everybody should be going to for their puppies. Even Senator Lesniak, the sponsor of the bill, said, and he testified in the Senate um, uh, Budget and Appropriations Committee, I think it was, that puppy mill, uh, USDA breeders are not puppy mills. USDA breeders are what we're going to sanction for pet stores in New Jersey to buy from. Um, so basically you have a bunch of rescue only people who want to continue to monopolize the pet marketplace. They don't want us to have a choice or any other consumer to have a choice as to where to get their puppy. They only want um, people to be able to go to a shelter or rescue. And interestingly enough, we researched, or I researched, um, a couple years back when they were looking at doing sourcing bans that would only allow us to buy from shelters and rescues, potentially in the state of New Jersey. So I reached out to a number of um, shelters, large and small around the state of New Jersey, and did not get a single um, uh, rescue or shelter that said that they would be able to work with me and supply dogs to me. So when Brian Hackett says the HSUS will work with you, to provide shelter dogs to you, that is not true. Um, and this is what I heard back from the Monmouth County SPCA. 
Um, they said, thank you for reaching, and I'll just quickly um, abbreviate, but thank you for reaching out to our organization in search of um, smaller, family-friendly, child-friendly, and non-aggressive dogs. Um, uh, unfortunately, we, are, we too are in search of these temperament dogs that are also young and small, and we seek out these ourselves by reaching out to the southern rescues and shelters. We struggle to keep a constant supply of these puppies for our adopters as we even pay the rescues and shelters to give us these dogs in addition to paying the transport fees to bring them here. Unfortunately, we would not be able to su supply you with these dogs that you are requesting as it would take away from our supply we Thank struggle you. to find. Thank you. I'm here to read a letter uh, from Ed Sayers, who is the Director of Animal Welfare Education. My name is Ed Sayers. Unfortunately, I am unable to be here tonight in person. I have de dedicated the past 46 years working to improve the welfare of companion animals. From 2003 to 2013, I served as a president of the ASPCA in New York City. I began my career in animal welfare in New Jersey in 1974 as a shelter manager at St. Herbert's Animal Welfare Center. I became their CEO in 1981 and led the organization until 1995. In 1983, I chaired a committee for the New Jersey Department of Health to create legislation for the first state subsidized spay and neuter program in the United States. Dog overpopulation is now regional, breed specific, size specific, and age specific. Demand for dogs now far exceeds the number of dogs in animal shelters. The American Veterinary Medical Association source book estimates that New Jersey residents will acquire between 100,000 to 120,000 puppies and dogs this year. Approximately 27,000 dogs will be available for adoption from New Jersey shelters. In New Jersey, demand for dogs far exceeds the number of homeless dogs available for adoption. Currently, 49% of owned dogs are purebred and 51% are mixed breed. The high demand for purebred puppies has created a growing black market for unlicensed substandard breeders to sell through the internet, Craigslist, flea markets, and public fairs. Puppy mills thrive in this growing, unregulated marketplace. The retail pet store is now the most regulated source for the acquisition of a new dog. The retail pet store can identify when and where the dog was bred, the breeder's kennel environment and standards of care, and how it was transported to the store. I have been speaking out against retail pet store bans for the past several years because they have had no impact on puppy mills. There continues to be the misguided view that there is a direct cause and effect relationship between retail pet stores and puppy mills. Over the past seven years, there have been 340 retail pet store bans, pet sale bans passed, and there is still no evidence that any have resulted in the closure of a single puppy mill. There is one important question to ask animal welfare advocates who label all commercial breeders as puppy mills. Have you ever visited a USDA licensed professional dog breeder? If so, when, where, and what professional experience do you have to evaluate a breeding kennel? Retail ban advocates presenting stock photos of unlicensed, substandard, illegal kennel operations and linking them to responsible, best practice breeders is dishonest and irres irresponsible. While Retail pet sale bans initiate initiatives have passionate advocates around the country. The Humane Society Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, just Gary Jr. from Health New Jersey. And I'm just here tonight to talk to you about how shelters do not conduct business. I'm going to give you facts and statistics about that. Uh, the National Animal Interest Alliance Shelter Project indicates that less than 5.5% of shelter pets are of purebreds. Without chihuahuas and pit bulls, the number drops to 3.3%. Therefore, except for those two breeds, less than 3.3% of shelter pets are purebreds. According to American Veterinary Medical Association's 2017-2018 pet ownership study, 
76 million dogs live in the United States. The New York Times reported that 83% of all dogs in America are either sprayed or neutered. The Washington Post reported that the recent demand for dogs reached 8 million. Uh, the ASPCA Pet Statistics website states that 3.3 million dogs enter sh uh, shelters annually, and of those, 620,000 are reunited with their owners. This leaves a 5.3 million gap in demand for dogs in the United States. So to meet this demand, over 1 million dogs are imported for shelters in the U.S. every year because they are not, there are not enough dogs to meet the demand according to the USDA's 2019 key report. Of those 1 million dogs, less than 1% are subject to thorough health screenings that ensure they are healthy and disease-free before entering the country. Shelters and rescues are not regulated. Unfortunately, more contagious outbreaks occur in the shelters than you would think. In fact, last month, the Monmouth County SPCA had to close for several weeks due to dog flu outbreak. So, in conclusion, if all these rescue groups are claiming there are too many dogs in the shelters, then why are they importing more than one million dogs in the United States per year? Thank you. No. No, this is a different topic. Different topic. <laughs> different topic. Hi, Joe Gallon, um, Matt Alvin. So everything you heard tonight, you heard a lot of nice stories. A lot of nice stories. This is a different topic. This is Puppy Mills. They were always pet shop. Okay. And this is disrespectful. That's a point of order. Please start. And sure, you're not running the meeting. That's right. That's right. Now, from a late perspective, I am, sir. And everybody was given a fair opportunity for the three minutes. Let me speak. You have the opportunity to speak. Because this is like a communist country. I'll just take a minute. So, in the last council meeting, you heard very similar stories from the state and tax people. We put together for you, we literally took everything they said, we took everything they said, and we researched it with real facts. And unfortunately, these people have great intentions, we get that. But they're educating themselves with the internet, okay? They've never been to one of the groups. They have experience. They're, they're rude, they have no experience. They're rude, all right, and they try to be rude. So, listen. It's emotion to deal with, not facts. This is literally, you can pass those out. This is everything that was spoken about in the last council meeting. And that will show you the facts with links and where to look up the facts. Okay. So I just want you guys to realize that this is a bunch of people that have good intentions, but they're misguided with wrong information. Hi. Good evening. You know, I guess we all got the opportunity to speak. This is on a different topic. <laughs> Your name, sir. My name is Charles Gadsby. Right. You weren't on the list of the five minutes, so you've already spoken to three minutes. I'm sorry. I was really going to speak to the point that you disallowed us to sign in, that the clerk stopped us from signing in. Sir, you were given your opportunity. Okay, I apologize. That's the truth. That's the truth. We're going to sign an affidavit tomorrow and file a formal complaint having to do with you stopping us from our public right to speak. You have a right to speak, and the council has the absolute right to limit the time frame to allow everyone to get their opinion out. Then this is not this is not on that topic. This is on a separate topic, sir. And there's no new business after 1030, sir. So if it's a new item, then it's, it's beyond that time frame. It's not a new item, sir. It's based on your just said, our rights. It just said, sir, that it was a new issue. Point of order. Thank you. Okay. I just actually do want to know um, when we change the rules, how that happens, because I didn't know we were changing the rules tonight with the commenting. So when does that decision take place? Just randomly? Or?
the so council that, president has the authority to limit the time to afford everybody an opportunity. That's not the issue. Okay. okay. So yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just asking when they made that decision because while I do know that the meeting's going to go a lot longer if we let her speak for five minutes, I still want to know why we made that decision without letting the whole council know and then also without announcing that at the beginning of the meeting. Like, I, I think people were misled if they came here thinking they had five minutes, number one, and number two, they were to be able to speak during the comment portion. So, I just, I'm curious why we didn't really announce that ahead of time, why I didn't know. I think only the state attorney general will be able to get, get to the bottom of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, I, I haven't had a time to talk. You were giving your opportunity. No, I wasn't. You didn't, you didn't stand up and go to the mic. Because people are standing up at the mic. Don't violate my rights. I will sue you. Oh, really? Yeah. I've sued you guys plenty of times already. You lose every single time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm taking 30 seconds Ma'am. to answer Mr. Gallo. He told me he buys from wonderful breeders. Ma'am. I will email all of you. Wonderful breeder, he if there's anybody who was on the five minute list that would like to speak, like they can speak. You violated our rights. I'm going to speak. I spoke on the five minute list and I'm going to speak. First of all, you didn't allow anybody to sign up at the time. I signed up because I knew better. So, all these people behind me have a right to be upset because your clerk told everybody that they had to wait until this ordinance came up, which is not true. That you please not not during my time not during my time not during my time. You want so that was a problem number one. Number two, the gentleman that sat down and said that there are no shelter laws, he really needs to to educate himself as to what the shelter laws are. Because first of all, we have Title IV. Second of all, we have A23A, which governs every shelter in this state. Even if you're a rescue, it governs you as a rescue shelter. So it absolutely does. Shut up. Oh, shut up. Come on, no, 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 which I know is, is not true. I have you recorded. So that's going up with the affidavit because you broke the law. It's your public meetings act. And I, yes, I have sued you guys plenty of times for violating the public law. And I have won every single time because you're incompetent as an attorney. So I'd like to address Mr. Gallo here. So he's talking all about transparency, right? I'm over here taking a picture of a public document. He's ripping it off the, off the desk not allowing me to take pictures of it, which is a public document. I have every right to do so. So he's talking about transparency. He's, he's a private shelter, he's a private business, right? So if I go in there and try to get some transparency, you'll be damn sure I'll be arrested for trespassing if I stay there, okay? That's a guarantee. Um, he's, he's citing over here about not taking pictures. It's a public meeting, public meetings act. You're allowed to videotape. He videotaped, he took pictures. I shoved no cameras in anybody's face. It's been about that far away, including out in the hallway when I was taking pictures, and he took pictures of me. So you can see that on his camera. Um, they're talking about generalities, about agendas, about propaganda without citing specifics, because they don't have specifics. Um, they're talking about um, the, the Hamilton shelter the girl talked about before. That health, health director is actually charged. The ACL just pled to like, PTI because of all the animals they killed illegally. Um, there's so many puppy mills out there. But these guys, they found the ones that are the best breeders in the United States. Am I, believe, am I believing that? They have, the, they have the secret sauce. There's no other breeders in the United States that they'll ever deal with that, that break the law. How many times does he ever follow the violation that he saw when he was visiting these properties? And I guarantee you, if I visit any of these properties, they'll be throwing me off. That property will not allow anybody in here to go in there and challenge what they're doing when they're breaking the law. I'm sure he's never challenged what they're doing. It's just yes, give me more commodity. You know, lives are commodity. Less, you know, it's a commercial breed or puppy mill, whatever you want to call it. It's all about selling lives. 
and then the shelters have to deal with it, your shelters have to deal with it, other shelters have to deal with it, and when they can't deal with it, they have to euthanize them. They're animals, the ones that they're bringing in. Not the, the shelters aren't bringing them in, these guys are bringing them in. And when they disagree with you, they're legally a terrorist. You call me a terrorist, how am I a terrorist? I'm a U.S. Marine. We, we disagree, that's it. I'm not calling them terrorists, nobody's calling them terrorists. We're simply saying we disagree with what they're doing, their, their business model of selling lies. They're, they're saying they're being harassed. Where are the charges at? They're just, they're just throwing out things to, to make it look like, oh, we're animal crazy animal people. We're saying specific things. And there's no stock photos you're getting there. Not one of them are stock. Hello, my name is Isabel Gallo. Obviously, I'm the mother yeah. of this Sorry. young man. Excuse me, I apologize, but I do have a motion on the floor. I have to acknowledge oh, I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Three more minutes, that's it. Okay. No, I just, you know, I couldn't stand back and just hear all these lies. I really do appreciate everyone coming out of here. Oh, no, I don't want to, all right. Don't ignore okay. it's ignore just, it. Yeah. Ignore the ignorance. This is the problem. My son has worked so hard since he was a young boy, helping animals, fostering animals. He worked at the ASPCA, okay? We saved a lot of animals during Sandy. He's got a heart of gold. I cannot sit here and hear these lies about him and the integrity of my family. I know that once this store is opened up, every single one of you will be very proud of us. Okay? Oh, we stand up. And I get it, okay? And it's very intimidating to have somebody just attack us, okay? I mean, we are very good people. Unlike you guys. Right. You know what? They show their true colors. And I'm very, very proud. I'm very, very proud of my son. And I just want to go on record. Yeah. Crazy. Get me on. It's not worth your time. Yeah. Shut your fucking mouth. Yeah. We have a motion for C-17.